when she passed away. I cried and cried for days, wanting what I had before. Thank you all for coming and braving this weather. Uh, and um, tonight, I'm going to try to make you laugh, maybe make you cry, uh, make you think, and make you realize that, like my mother said, the greatest gems are not in your bank, they're in the faces of your children. Uh, and hopefully we can do some planning to protect that family. Um, I want to first of all just uh, say I'm honored to have my two daughters here tonight. My daughter's got called to the bar. And she's going to be a Will's lawyer, like her dad, and my other daughter working with those days. I'm proud of you both. I just want to say that. My partner Barry Fish is in the back, and we'll be here to answer questions afterwards. But I'm going to talk about what we're seeing in our practice. As many of you know, I do a lot of radio and TV, uh, and I often get calls on radio uh, about, you know, I hate my brother, I hate my sister. We get calls in our office, uh, please, next time you call my brother, tell him how much I hate him. Or don't refer to him as my brother, he's my mother's other child. These are the kind of things that we hear because we hear fighting and bitterness and all kinds of stuff like that. Uh, and it, it's kind of shocking to us and we're starting to see an explosion of families fighting over inheritance. Now, my life started working in a hardware store on Eglinton with my dad. And I remember people coming into the store in 1980s to buy paint uh, and to buy nails, to buy picture hangers to hang up their family portraits. Their house was their castle, it was their life, and they wanted it the best for their children, and they wanted it spotless, and they wanted their lawn green, and they used to buy all kinds of stuff to make their house spotless. But when I'm now I'm a wills lawyer, and I see what happened to that house today, where that house isn't a house of love by the, considered by the children after mom has died, it's a house of dollars. And it's a house we're gonna fight over because you're not getting it, I'm getting it, and I'm taking you to court if you, if, if, if you think I'm not gonna attack that will. So I've seen two sides of life with that, with that home, the family home. The side where mom and dad cherished it, and it was a house of love, and now it's only an asset. And it, it's really troubling to me when I see that. And what we're seeing is the destruction of the family. This family unit is being destroyed. Uh, and many times, there are four kids. Every one of the kids has a, has a separate lawyer fighting each other after dad dies. And many times, it was the parents themselves that set the, the seeds of destruction of their own family because, as one man said, his family was not the Partridge family that was on television. His family was the Ostrich family because they stuck their heads in the sand and never talked about this, never talked to their children, never, the kids knew nothing. And when the parents died, it was just an absolute mess. And we're also seeing a number of uh, interesting demographic issues. One is we're seeing the baby boomers, my generation, now inheriting from their parents who went through the Great Depression, the parents who were savers, the parents who saved as much as they could, the, people who, the parents who used old yogurt containers so they could keep them for other things, paper bags were used all, all the time, they didn't pay $6 for a coffee, they wouldn't go to a restaurant and pay $20 for a pasta dinner, they did it all themselves. And now their children are the opposite. The baby boomers, what we see, are, a lot of them are free spenders, a lot of them are full of debt, and a lot of them are depending upon the parents' money as a mattress to fall down on to protect themselves after mom and dad died because they're loaded with debt. And I had one client come in to me. Uh, one of the things I do, I'm also a professional songwriter, so I do a lot of people in the music industry uh, in terms of wills. And this fancy car comes into my parking lot. We're in Thornhill on Young Street, north of Steeles. And this fancy car zooms into my parking lot. And out of it comes this man in this exquisite suit, because I can look out the window and I saw my next client coming. And his wife wore a beautiful, beautiful uh, uh, dress and, and, and leathered coat. And they come into my office, and we, in our, they come into our boardroom, and he's in his mid, mid, mid to late 50s, and I sit down with him, and the first thing I notice is that he's got his arm, so I can see his Rolex watch on his arm, and she's got her diamond tennis bracelet gleaming in the, in the fluorescence, so I guess they wanted to impress with this great wealth that they had. Uh, and I thought they were musicians or people who had made it big in the music industry. Uh, and I, I said, sir, where do you live? And he says, well, we live in the Rosedale area. Uh, and I said, oh, and he says, you must know my neighbors. One is a very famous CEO, and the other is a very famous uh, TV personality. He said, well, I didn't really know them, but he said, they're my neighbors. And I said, sir, can I ask you what, what you own? Do you own your home? He said, oh, no, 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 it's fully mortgaged. Do you own your car? Oh, no, 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 that's leased. What else do you own? Well, I don't own a lot. And I said, ma'am, what do you do for a living? She said, I'm a substitute school teacher. Okay, and, and I said, sir, what do you do? And his wife jumps in and says, Harry's not going to tell you this, 
but he's a waiter. And I said, really, Harry, what restaurant are you waiting in? He says, she says, no less, not that kind of waiter. He's waiting for his mom to die so he can get his inheritance. And she was not choking with me. Uh, and this is what we're seeing. We're seeing a lot of waiters out there, and parents have to protect themselves because these waiters will fight over tooth and nail with their siblings, if you don't do it right, to get every dollar they can get because he came out of your room just like your daughter did. And he's going to fight because you're his mother or your father, and he's going to fight tooth and nail if he doesn't get what he expects to get. So you've got to do proper planning. And it, it reminds me of another joke about these two baby boomers and one's talking to the other and says, you know, Charlie, I don't understand this. We grew up on the same street in downtown Toronto. Your father was a shoemaker, mine was a tailor. Your mother cut out coupons, my mother cut out coupons. We both didn't have air conditioning in our house. We both had more hand-me-downs. We didn't uh, go to expensive restaurants, but today I notice you have a house in Rosedale, a house in Forest Hill, a house in Arizona, and a house in Miami. You have three cars, a Ferrari, a Maserati, and a Porsche. He says, what are you worth? He says, I'm worth about eight million. He says, eight million dollars? He says, what did I do wrong? I went to the same school. I went to the, we did everything to the same. What did I do wrong? He says, look, I don't want to brag to you. But I'll tell you how, my, how I made my very first dollar. He says, tell me, tell me, how'd you make your first dollar? He says, remember the apple farm near our house? He said, yeah. He said, well, when Mr. Jones wasn't looking, I picked an apple and I sold it for 20 cents. And he said, okay. And he said, the next day, when he wasn't looking, I picked another apple, I sold it for 20 cents. He says, that's okay. And then the next week, when he went away on vacation, I picked a half a basket and I sold it for 60 cents. He says, okay, Harry, I understand how you made your very first dollar, but how'd you make the other eight million? He says, that was easy. My uncle died and left it to me. Anyway, <laughs> okay. so there's your, there's your humor about inheritance. Let's get into serious stuff now. So the other thing we're seeing is, we'll talk about, is second marriages, third marriages. We're seeing older people marry younger people now today, like, you know, 70-year-olds with 40-year-olds or 30-year-olds, and we'll talk about that and what goes on. Uh, and we're seeing a lot of these shifting. And, you know, the second marriage where you have his kids, her kids, our kids, it can be a real nightmare for planning a will. Uh, there's a lot of people today whose children are on disability support plans. So you have to have a very special will to protect your child's benefits. Uh, if you own a company uh, and you want to say what we call probate, you can make a second will for your company. So that when people don't, a lot of people don't know this, you can make a second will to, for, that called a secondary will so that if you have a company, a privately held company, and you pass away, your kids don't have to pay probate on, on the value of your company. A lot of people don't know that. So we'll talk about that. Uh, there are people, a lot of people today cutting out children, and we'll talk about how to cut out a child if you haven't seen a child, or how to protect a child. If, if a child is a spendthrift, how do you protect that? So we'll get into that 